Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of College Registrars and Admissions Officers, CACRO, and StriveScan. A couple quick things before we get started. Um, first off, the panelists cannot see or hear you. Your camera and microphone are off, but you can communicate with them through the Q&A feature that you see on your screen. So if you click on that, you can actually type questions to the panelists and they will be able to address those during the presentation. Um, and this presentation is going to be recorded. So um, you will be able to go back and view it on the CACRO website, CACRAO.org. Um, if they can't get to all of your questions today. They are going to receive a transcript of all of your questions, uh, so they will have access to that afterward as well within about a week. You can also sign up for more sessions at that same website, cacro.org, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. There's a couple more this afternoon and uh, into next week, starting next week, there's going to be individual college information sessions over the course of these next couple weeks. So definitely check that out as well. And with that, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters. Thanks so much. I'm going to go ahead and jump on here. There we go. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. My name is Alicia Duga and I'm the Associate Director for Undergraduate Admissions at the University of North Carolina Greensboro. It is really great to have you all here. We know you're interested in um, the college and visual arts and so that's why we put together this panel today. Um, I'm going to have each person introduce themselves as they're presenting for their school and then we have we're also going to put our contact information on a screen so you can just take your phone out, take a picture, and then you have our information in front of you. Here's a great picture of one of our productions that we just finished um, about a year ago. Just a really neat experience for these students. You can walk on as a student at UNCG, so you can audition and walk on. You can either be in the major, in the minor, or just have a passion or an interest. I'm gonna go ahead and play this video for everybody. Bill, will you give me the thumbs up if you hear the sound? This, this is a remarkable place. A place steeped in history where trails have been blazed Discoveries have been made, and lives have been changed forever. This is a place that holds questions and answers, problems and solutions. It's a place to tap into your creativity, curiosity, and ambition. This is a place to pursue what makes you, you. Here you'll be challenged and cheered and you'll join a tradition of change makers. This is a place you'll miss when you leave. Look around and picture yourself here at this unique time in this remarkable place. You'll be amazed at what you find. Welcome to UNC Greensboro. Find your way here. Oh, that always happens, it seems like. There we go. So we have over 125 degree programs in things like the business school, so business administration, entrepreneurship, uh, the School of Health and Human Sciences, Social Work, Kinesiology, and many others. The College of Arts and Sciences, your very traditional biology, biochem, foreign languages, math, English, the School of Nursing, and also the School of Education. But I know that a lot of you are interested in our College of Visual and Performing Arts. Within there, we have four schools, the School of Art, which includes arts administration, which is a really neat program combining your passion with a business flair, art history, art education. We also have the School of Dance. You can get a BA, which is a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Fine Arts in dance performance and choreography. We have the School of Music, so you can again get that general degree, a Bachelor of Arts. We also have music education and then many, many Bachelor of Music programs um, in performance. And finally, the School of Theater, 
we have a BA in drama. We also have a BFA in musical theater, acting, tech design and production, as well as theater education. A little bit about our College of Visual and Performing Arts, you really get the best of all worlds. You get a small conservatory type feel while also being immersed in your passion every day. And finally, you get to be in a community of a university that's about 20,000 students in the heart of downtown Greensboro. Greensboro is the third largest city in North Carolina. And so we have a great community um, partnership here where you can do internships, externships, and we have a great um, audience to be able to view your art as well. Our art students, our uh, visual and performing arts students get to be a part of the Lloyd International Honors College. They also can study abroad and they also have an opportunity to do a residential college where they take a common course with other students. So some of the other things you can find at UNCG are 17 NCAA Division I athletic sports, both for men and for women. My idea of um, D1 sports is to be a really good cheer for my team. Um, certainly, I, I'm not at, a, at a, that kind of high level of expertise, but you can also do um, club sports as well as um, some other different opportunities. We have fraternities and sororities, religious groups, uh, multicultural organizations, and then over 160 service-oriented clubs. One thing I want to highlight is we have an amazing residence hall called Studio 91 that opened two years ago. It's also referred to as Cone Residence Hall, and it's actually the residence hall closest to the music building and kind of our performing and visual arts square. So if you think of our campus as a square, one entire side of that is really filled with all of our CVPA um, interests and buildings. Um, this residence hall has a dance studio inside of it with a bar and mirrors and a sprung floor. It also has an arts lounge. It has a computer space so that all of our newest um, software is there. And it also has nine practice rooms that are soundproof that you can use 24 hours a day. So this is really where our students love to stay. Um, you can be a major, you can be a minor, or you can just um, be there because you're passionate about the visual and performing arts. It's also a great opportunity for where students um, get to be together. It's hard to beat a UNCG degree. Um, many of you are in-state, and so you'll be paying the in-state tuition and fees, which is only $7,403. So it's a great um, degree, and it's hard to beat the value of a UNCG degree. You can live on campus or off any of your years, so you don't have to live on campus. And we also have great meal plans. 65% of first year students do receive some sort of financial aid. How do you get into UNCG? How do you get um, accepted? So you do have to turn in an application. There's a $65 application fee or your counselor can turn in a waiver for you. We need your official transcripts. That means don't use your phone and take a selfie with your school record on it. That doesn't quite count. Um, we are waiving all of our test scores, so you do not have to attach any test scores for scholarships, for honors, or anything else. Um, I do really strongly recommend turning in an essay. That essay is very important. So our average student is about a 3.74 weighted high school GPA. We certainly look at students above that, and we certainly look at students in that range and below it. So I would say as long as you have a 3.0, turn in that application, tell us about who you are, tell us about what you want to be studying, about what you've done in high school, give us your academic rigor, um, and let us be able to help uh, figure out if you're going to be a great fit for UNCG. You do not have to be admitted to UNCG in order to start the audition process. Our deadlines are December 1st, January 15th, and March 1st. December 1st, January 15th, and March 1st. We're a little bit later than some other schools, which gives you a little bit more time. Don't wait till last minute. A few things about our CVPA majors, there are going to be auditions and almost all of those will be virtual this year. So dance will have auditions, acting and musical theater will have to be pre-screened via accepted, 
And then music will also have auditions. If there's anything that good that's come from the COVID world, it's that we've realized that almost all of our auditions can be online and we still get a true sense of who the student is and their quality of their work, of their art and work. Now's the time to take out your phone, take a picture. This is my email address, my direct office line, my text number so you can call me. Um, if you want to set up an appointment to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'm already getting those scheduled, so please do that. I can meet with your family or just you or you and your counselor. And I really, really strongly recommend opening this view book and starting your own view book where, where you will pick the majors you're interested in and all the clubs and activities and be able to learn about it. So again, take that picture, take that phone out, and I'm going to turn this over to Daryl, my friend from ECU, who's going to tell you more about his program. All right, thank you, Alicia. Can everybody see me? No. Can you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Daryl, do you want us to move on to UNCSA and come back? Uh, yes, please. Oh, there you go, Daryl. You're up. Okay, all right, cool. All right, let me share my screen here. Can you, show, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. okay, awesome, thank you. Sorry about that. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Daryl Perkins. I'm the Associate Director for Freshman Recruitment at East Carolina University. Uh, I wanna thank you for joining us. Uh, today I'm gonna talk briefly about the School of Art and Design, Theater and Dance, and School of Music at East Carolina University. So starting with the School of Art and Design, uh, students have the option of choosing a BFA in art or art education. Uh, the program does not require you to submit a portfolio. However, we will be required to submit a portfolio at the end of your sophomore year. Uh, to articulate AP scores for art classes, students will need to score a three. Uh, for all other classes, you will either need a four or a five. Uh, the program is a very demanding program, so time management skills are very important. So you want to make sure that you're doing the best to manage your time to uh, submit your projects in a timely manner. Uh, currently, instruction is being delivered online for the program, but the studios are open. So if you can see here, the young lady who has the uh, camera, uh, she's a photography major. Uh, if you need to uh, complete a project, uh, the labs, the digital labs, and also the dark rooms are open. So I'm just gonna highlight just a few of the concentrations, the first one being animation and interactive design. Uh, this concentration blends traditional fine art disciplines with digital media. Uh, coursework converts a broad array of digital applications and media, ranging from video art to game design to interaction, to interaction design. Uh, students get experience creating digital environments in 2D animation, character design, and game design. Moving next to film and production, or FVP for short, uh, this concentration focuses on writing, shooting, editing, marketing film, and media projects. Uh, projects are written and developed in classes and produced through a collaborative effort with your other FVP uh, cohort of students. Uh, finished works are screened on film festivals, TVs, the web, and client presentations. And lastly, I'm gonna discuss photography. Uh, this concentration focuses on providing a comprehensive learning experience with exposure to a rich range of our tools and mediums that we have to offer, starting with 19th century photography um, that leads all the way up into the current uh, digital technologies. All right, now we're gonna move on to the School of Theater and Dance. Uh, we do offer a BFA in dance with a concentration in performance and choreography. Uh, this prepares you for a professional career as a dancer, choreographer, or both. You will study courses in ballet, modern, and jazz. Uh, you'll take classes in improvisation, uh, theater technology, kinesiology, pedagogy, and history. In your senior year, you'll deliver a choreography project. So next, moving on to musical theater. Uh, in this concentration, you receive a comprehensive, intensive four-year training in acting, uh, singing, and dance, gaining the experience you'll need to competitively pursue a career in musical theater. Uh, you will study a fit... Uh, <clears throat> You will study with faculty actively engaged in the profession to hone both the technique and artistry required uh, of a versatile music theater performing in today's industry. Next, we're gonna move on to professional acting and training. 
Uh, you will undergo a rigorous conservatory style training in preparation for a lifelong uh, time in work in film and television and on stage. One of the things that's really cool is that you will also receive training in um, special movements. So you can actually get certified in um, the artistry of combat. Also as well, students will uh, receive intensive coursework in a Meisner technique, uh, which is you know, a, a technique that is often used in terms of uh, producing a conservatory style training. Also as well, uh, design and production. As a first year student, you'll enjoy a rotation through shops, uh, learning vocabulary techniques, practices of each discipline. You'll learn both the technical and design aspects of each area. In costume, you'll learn how to read a pattern, sew, analyze a script, and craft renderings. In lighting, you'll learn how the function of each instrument and how to hang them properly and safely. In scenic design, you'll learn how to make models and construct flats. In scenic, in scenic construction, you'll learn how to read a drafting, uh, work with numerous tools and build a set. A lab component uh, of each area will give you hands-on experience directly related to main stage production in the ECU uh, licensed playhouse. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna talk about the School of Music really quickly. Uh, prospective students, and when you apply to ECU, you apply to the university and you apply as a music major. Uh, once you apply as a music major, you will receive additional information regarding your audition uh, for, the, for the program. Uh, music scholarships are based on your audition performance, and February 20th is a deadline to be considered for music scholarships. Uh, this fall, the, music, uh, the School of Music is going to host uh, different <clears throat> programs for prospective students, uh, so definitely go to the music.ecu.edu page to learn more about that. Now I'm just going to highlight just a few of the majors and then share some additional information with you. Uh, so our program has been providing a uh, practicum experience, uh, practicum training experience for students for over 30 years. Our students are employed around the world in hospitals, assisted, assisted living centers, clinics, schools, community treatment, and private practice uh, for music therapy. For theory and composition, uh, composition, this program is developed. Uh, devoted to helping you develop a, the skills necessary to pursue a professional and or academic career in the composition of contemporary concert music. With music theory, this program is designed to help you develop your skills in music analysis with specialized instruction and counterpoint, uh, Schnarankian, uh, post-tonal analysis, as well as music theory uh, pedagogy. Musicology, this program encompasses uh, required undergraduate courses in music history and literature and the world of music and upper division graduate elective uh, courses exploring the history of specific musical errors as well as topics in ethnomusicology. And performance, uh, we offer specializations in jazz studies, percussion performance, piano performance, sacred music, string performance, voice performance, and wind performance. So as I mentioned before, um, the School of Music, as well as the School of Art Design, have special days where you can come to learn more about the different programs. As you can see, they're listed here. Um, the School of Art and Design, uh, their first one focuses on animation and interactive design, ceramics, film, and illustration. Uh, the second date, October 7th, focuses on graphic design, metals, painting and drawing, and printmaking. And the last one uh, focuses on photography, sculpture, textiles, art ed, and art history. For the School of Music, we have three different days. Um, that is on September 1st, 14th, sorry, going to get that out. Um, and that's focusing on music majors. On October 5th, um, it, that academic day uh, focuses on preparation for your audition. And then on November 2nd, that academic day focuses on uh, the ma your major in music. So with all of that said, I want to share the contact information for the different colleges. So we have the contact information for the Fine Arts Department and also for the School of Music. And if you want to reach out to me, I can be reached at Perkins, P-E-R-K-I-N-S, D as in dog, A as in apple, 1-9 at ecu.edu. Or you can give me a call at 252-328-1710. Thank you for listening. Okay, hey, I'm Bill Poole from University of North Carolina School of the Arts. And let me get my 
slideshow up here for you. Um, I'm in the Office of Admissions and I'm the liaison for the School of Drama. I've got a lot of photographs of different programs here at the school. We are strictly a conservatory, uh, performance degrees, Bachelor of Music, and then Bachelor of Fine Arts for all of the other programs, dance, drama, filmmaking, and the tech areas of design and production. So that, that first slide I just showed you was an opera going on with the School of Music and of course our orchestra uh, and the tech for the set design and lights and costumes and everything. This is a sound designer in the School of Design and Production, which has about 12 concentrations. So you can see the boards working the lights on, on one of their exhibitions for just lighting. This is the paint shop where scenic painters are doing their work. And that's a big difference, I think, from uh, our conservatory and the other schools where we are focusing mainly on performing arts with dance, drama, and music. But in the School of Design and Production, that we have scenic painters, uh, which is a major, as opposed to uh, the other schools on the program today, which have uh, either a BA or a BFA in studio art. So we do have a lot of uh, students who have great visual art skills and techniques and knowledge, and they utilize that though in support for performing arts. So you can see these scenic painters with their long brushes doing the backdrops for productions, which could be for either for uh, live dance performances or opera or drama productions, anything. They do the support for all live performances. This is an image of, of our contemporary dancers. We have two majors in the School of Dance, either contemporary or ballet, or uh, however, they do have overlap in the instruction between the two styles, as well as do their own choreography and uh, guest artists, of course, that are coming in all of the programs all throughout the year. Here's our ballet majors, uh, one image of those folks. And then here's some drama students and a, uh, particular play. I think this was kind of a modern rendition of Midsummer Night's Dream of Shakespeare last year. In drama, uh, there are two majors. One mainly uh, for the majority of the, of the actors is the acting major versus the directing major. We have a very few students come in as directors, uh, but most of them come in as, as acting majors. We do auditions of course, uh, on campus, but in the past, we have done them in New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles as well during the unified group of auditions that has happened every year for, for many years. However, this year, because of the pandemic era, we are going to have to do virtual auditions. So we don't do pre-screens for drama like a lot of other conservatories do, but we want to see everybody and we will then do virtual live auditions uh, through Zoom. And so the application is open now for people to start applying, pay the application fee, and then you'll get an email to select your audition date for drama. There's another um, image of one of the plays last year. This is a soundstage in the School of Filmmaking and with drama students in that hot air balloon. So that's a really great way for the drama students to get um, some really great experience in the uh, film school's productions of various types of movies. They, the drama students have an acting for the camera course and get a lot of camera technique help from um, a guest artist uh, that comes down from New York every year to help them. He's a, a professional coach uh, for a lot of schools, including Juilliard, and he comes and helps us uh, improve our camera technique. And then the filmmakers get the great joy of having awesome actors in their movies. So students who are interested in, in making films, and they have seven concentrations between directing, producing, screenwriting, production design, animation, cinematography, and it's a, a really nice uh, bonus to this campus here uh, to make 
good friends and relationships, networking with students to be able to keep those activities going after graduation because you are in a village of artists here. It's a kind of an artist ecosystem where we are uh, all artists here at UNCSA and do a lot of collaboration and interdisciplinary involvement. That's one of our majors in, in school of filmmaking, animation. These are musicians majoring in those instruments you see uh, playing now. So this, uh, but they're in a sound stage in the school of filmmaking, doing the recording for a soundtrack to a particular movie. So musicians get some great experience working not only uh, in a performance on stage for their own concerts of different uh, ensembles and the, uh, or the larger orchestra, but also in a small ensemble like you see here uh, as a soundtrack for a film in, in the recording studio, the sound scoring stage of the School of Filmmaking. So there's a lot of different opportunities as well as being in the pit for uh, a musical by drama or an opera. So a lot of good uh, diverse experiences available. There's our musicians again on stage. And this is another opera. Uh, so we have vocal performance majors as well as majors in every instrument of the orchestra, as well as uh, composition majors. Uh, we have uh, classical guitar as well and harp. And so it's um, a wide range of involvement here for the School of Music. Besides the undergraduate program, we do have graduate school in three areas, uh, music, design and production, and filmmaking. And besides those two levels of undergrad and grad, we also have a high school program. So if any of you are interested in our high school program and are not yet in the 12th grade, you can uh, contact me or any of other counselors um, about the high school program. So the required documents are here. And just like all the other schools, our artistic statement is a uh, college essay for conservatory. And we've got examples on our website from some students who got accepted that you can see what they wrote. The uh, liberal arts type courses, besides the arts, this is a big difference between us and I think other schools where the gen eds are only 30 hours out of about 120 total. So your arts courses are gonna be in the great majority of your curriculum. Take out your phone, take a picture. I'm in the middle there if you're interested in drama. And then we have our other counselors here from uh, the left to right with dance, design and production, and then filmmaking and music after me. So please send us an email if we can help you and we appreciate your interest in our conservatory today. And I'll turn it over to Mason. Thank you so much. Getting rid of the screen. <laughs> Let me see if I can get mine up here. Uh, trying to stop sharing screen, let's see, here we go. Thanks Mason. Yep, of course. All righty, let me make sure. All right, and everyone can see my screen fine? Yeah? All right, there we go. So with that being said, on with the show. <laughs> so uh, again, my name is Mason Betterly. Uh, I am um, here at, uh, at our studio campus for uh, Living Arts College. We've been around since 1991. Um, and what we really do and what we're really about is uh, um, we're here to uh, prepare our students for working in the creative industries. Um, and then just have some, uh, you know, images here of some of the amazing things that our students are uh, uh, working in and every day in their classes. Um, and there is actually uh, our campus there. Uh, I think if you see my picture, that's behind me. But what uh, it's really about here at Living Arts is applied creativity. Um, so uh, one of our, one of our uh, six programs is animation and game design. It's a wonderful program we have there. Uh, we work a lot with VR technology and AR technology um, and uh, imaging to bring characters to life and what you do in that course is actually um, start from scratch basically uh, with designing characters and work 
all the way up to animating that character. Um, you know, I've personally seen their work um, go from, you know, sketchboard to uh, full images, and it's really incredible. Another uh, one of our majors is photography and imaging. So uh, if you are passionate about um, just creating wonderful artwork with, uh, with a camera, going out uh, and taking photos or videography, um, you're even looking into advertising as that is a key component, uh, component of that major, um, that might be something for you. Um, and then uh, we have our filmmaking and VFX. Uh, so if you are interested in directing, uh, being a cinematographer, producer, that's really where uh, you are really going to um, that's really where you belong there. Uh, we have a lot of hands-on um, practices and uh, activities there throughout the major um, that are really, uh, really put you to the test and really help you grow as a storyteller. Um, interactive media and design, that is all about um, more 2D imaging, if you will. Um, so if it, your interests are more within the lines of 2D animation, that actually is where um, you would want to look. But also there's a lot of web design there. There's a lot of um, marketing, advertising, and really learning uh, what makes uh, a great image that's going to sell a product or uh, tell a story. And then finally, uh, audio and design. Um, audio is actually one of our most popular courses uh, there actually, as you'll see one of our classrooms. Um, <clears throat> we have a full uh, studio here uh, on our studio campus. Um, we have full sound boards that you use in the industry. Um, and I, I know those audio students are in there all the time working. Um, and then we have interior design. Um, so that is uh, a really cool major. Um, you start uh, from scratch and just design um, not just buildings, not just uh, 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 de decor uh, for rooms and stuff, but you actually make them. Um, it, it's really cool. Their, their classroom is just lined with all sorts of beautiful uh, different types of fabrics they use and different, um, different actual furniture pieces that they've created. I really like hanging out there myself. Um, this is actually that class. Um, <clears throat> so you see one of our professors uh, talking with a student there, um, and they're in there all the time. Um, so another thing that I did mention earlier, uh, we're a lot involved with AR and VR. We work with HoloLens and um, Oculus Rift to um, integrate that really into all of our majors so that we give you not just uh, physical hands-on uh, experience, but that virtual hands-on experience, which is growing rapidly every day. Uh, so we do have that um, immersive reality lab. I think we have a picture of it here. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I feel like I, I stepped into a science fiction movie um, and anytime I go to check that out. Um, but our bachelor's uh, degrees are three years. Uh, we don't work off of a uh, semesterized system. We work off of a quarterly system. So you are uh, working around the clock, really, and it really puts your nose to the grindstone um, and really hones your skills and, and pushes you to the limits. And I think, I think a lot of the students are stronger for it. Um, so yeah, we just have some of the amazing stuff that uh, our students have done. This is actually our uh, the red carpet lobby of our Stars Theater. I think we have a picture of it here. Yeah, we have our own theater where uh, film students actually show their uh, their work, and uh, audio students are able to uh, mix in there as well. Um, and there's uh, some more images of uh, some of the stuff our students do. It's it's pretty incredible. Um, this is our uh, media center. We have uh, a great uh, center here where you're able to not just have uh, just your general books, but there's so much uh, material there uh, that is pertinent specifically to your majors um, and films as well. Um, you know, a great, great uh, way to be better at film is to watch some of the greats. And we have a very comprehensive uh, library of film as well. And there's our uh, tech center, what we like to call the fishbowl, because it's, uh, you know, <laughs> you actually see some of the fish there. Um, 
and then uh, yeah, some more of our students. But really, um, uh, I firmly believe that the success of our school is uh, lies in the success of our students, and we've had several. Uh, students go on to win uh, uh, several awards, the the Addies, um, as well as students go on and be part of several uh, big budget games and motion pictures, uh, the biggest of which is the second high engrossing film of all time, Avatar, um, and uh, a couple Star Wars films as well. It's, pre it's pretty incredible. So uh, here at Living Arts, we're really, um, we're really raising up the next generation of um, creative uh, individuals who are going to be at the, the front of the industry. Um, it, and that's what it's really all about, the creativity professional. <clears throat> but um, it's going to be uh, all about you uh, heading to work and uh, really getting your hands on the material and uh, really growing here. But with that being said, I know we're a little short on time, so I wanted to uh, turn this over here. Um, one second, let me make sure I pull up uh, my information really quick. If you want to get more info, I'm going to pull up a little slide from this other presentation here that has my info. If you want to take a quick snapshot. All right. Right, let me pull this up really fast and then we can get on with answering any of our questions. Oh, let me get through this really quick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All righty. <laughs> and I overshot. Anyway, my, uh, my email is there at the bottom and we are going to have our independent session on Tuesday, September 29th at 3 p.m. where we're going to be able to go in deeper on our courses and uh, what we have there. But with that being said, I'm going to back out of sharing my screen. All right. And uh, we're going to be able to answer some questions now. And I think we did have a couple there. Oh, looks like we just got one in. Okay. So this question asks about portfolios. Um, and does the student need to submit one or should I include anything I drew? So I think each school should probably answer um, because I would guess that it's probably different per school. For UNCG, you can come in and select the School of Art major. Um, you will not be required to present a portfolio until the end of your freshman year. So that gives you a little bit of um, reprieve that you can come in, select the major that you're interested in, and really work on your art and your portfolio creation during that first year. Um, and you will then present that portfolio to your um, professors and then be admitted into the Bachelor of Fine Arts um, school. So um, that's the way that UNCG works. Uh, Daryl, ECU. Let me, can you hear me? Okay, so with ECU, um, like I said before, the students aren't required to submit a portfolio um, when they apply to the institution. Their portfolio will actually be due at the end of their sophomore year. So they have that time to explore and figure out what it is that they wanna actually pursue in terms of a major and a concentration, and then they can start building their portfolio from there. At UNCSA, we have many different kinds of portfolios because we have 12 concentrations in the tech areas for design and production. And so each one is so uh, different and unique. However, there certainly could be a lot of overlap in the examples that you would submit for a portfolio. But I would just recommend looking at that on our website, as well as the portfolio for filmmaking students. So there's seven concentrations in film. 12 and DNP. So go to the website uncsa.edu um, and you would need to submit those uh, before you interview. Uh, so it's one of the materials for application as long as as well as all the other materials as well. And then at uh, Living Arts we um, we do take a uh, portfolio as well as a short essay. Um, it's typically just a page in length double spaced um, just talking about your goals but really that's that's the extent of it um, and I know later on in the process uh, there typically is a very short test less than 10 minutes 
but uh, yeah, so if you do have pieces, um, you know, a, a portfolio that's pertinent to the major um, that you're looking at taking on, um, you just get that together. And we have a special link on our website, living-arts-college.edu, um, that will uh, take that and send that to uh, our admissions office. Um, I think we have just a minute or two. Does everybody want to share their most important deadline date? So the one date that they really um, think is important for us, that would be December 1st. Uh, that would give you all the opportunities for scholarships, for priority with financial aid, um, and you will hopefully have an answer to your admission um, maybe even in time for the holidays. And I know that that's always a really great thing. Daryl, want to go next? Okay, so I would say for us, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I would say for ECU, uh, one of the biggest deadlines would be uh, December 15th, um, just to make sure that you get your application in time to where uh, we can get it processed. Um, also, too, if you're interested in an honors college, uh, that would give us enough time to get your application in um, and get a process so you could qualify for the honors, honors college and also financial aid. Um, we all know on October 1st that the FAFSA opens up. Um, so that's something that you definitely want to pay attention to complete the FAFSA. And <clears throat> I would say, yeah, December 15th, that would be the biggest day for ECU. UNCSA, uh, November 2nd, January 18, and March 1. Those are all on a Monday. And those are the three application deadline dates. Some of those uh, may not actually apply to the program that you're applying for, and some do. So they're, they're a little bit different based on each of the five uh, arts departments in our conservatory here. So I would say go you know, talk with your uh, liaison on the picture uh, that I gave on our last slide, or just contact admissions here if you didn't get the, the picture then we can help you further. And then uh, with Living Arts, um, you know, due to our uh, size, we do have a limited number of uh, students we're able to accept, but we are open uh, and accepting applications right now. And again, we work off of a quarterly uh, schedule. So that means we have, you know, uh, a quarter starting every uh, couple of months. So right now we're going to be starting classes in a, a couple of weeks um, and then going to be starting our next quarter. Um, in January, and then uh, I believe April, and then uh, June from there. So we're always um, taking in applications, um, and you know you can start at any time. It's not like you have to start in the fall or, or the spring. Um, we're around pretty much all uh, all the time throughout the year. Um, and I did see a, a quick question pop up. Uh, uh, I just wanted to jump on really quick. Um, I believe someone was asking about uh, certain you know, kind of art pieces. And I really think um, just kind of piggybacking on that really quick is just focus on what your specific major is. Uh, just for example here, if you're looking to be audio, make some audio, exa uh, you know, examples of your work audio wise, or if you want to get into film, try to, you know, send in a bit of a script or a YouTube link or things like that. Just focus on what you're really going after and then try and cater that portfolio to that. I think for all of us, it's just about being authentically you, presenting you to the university. And um, that's going to be the best presentation of yourself, right? Who you are, authentically you, not what you think other people want to see you be. So um, I, and I really appreciated working with my new friends all over North Carolina. Um, it has been a real pleasure, gentlemen. Um, and I just hope that you guys make contact with any of us or all of us. We each offer something a little different. So thank you so much. Thank you to CACRO for having us um, in this presentation and reach out if you have any more um, questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, thank you everyone and thank you to our panelists. We are gonna wrap this session up and just a quick note before um, for doing that, I um, have one last slide to share. Uh, there is a quick four question survey that's gonna pop up when we close out this window. So we ask that you do um, go ahead and fill that out. We would appreciate that. And then you can also sign up for more sessions again at cacro.org, C-A-C-R-A-O.org. And this recording is going to be available within about a week on that same website. So thank you, everyone, and hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.